most of the instruction that we get when we learn to drive the car is to press the brake pedal which is the one next to the accelerator. And the harder we press it, the quicker the car will stop. And in an emergency situation, you need to press it very hard indeed. Well, they never really take the time to explain the physics involved, how you can graduate your braking and get the best braking advantage possible when it comes to stopping your car. Most cars' brakes will work more effectively when they're warm. If the brakes are cold, they're not at their maximum biting point. Now, when you actually brake in a car, you'll notice all of the weight is being thrown forwards. And you can use that to your advantage. So most drivers will be thinking having all the weight on the front of the car will just cause the car to skid. Well, it does at a certain point, but up to that point where you lose grip, you've actually maximized the grip potential of the car. So all the weight is being thrown forward. Those front wheels are really digging in. So braking is very much a function of grip, the amount of grip your tires have. When all the weight of the car is on those front tires, you're really increasing the grip. So when you're braking in an emergency situation, it's really good to get that braking momentum on as quickly as you can and as hard as you can and then as you start reaching that point of adhesion you start to lose that at that point you want to start backing off hesitating at that point can dramatically increase your stopping distance another thing drivers fail to do is to brake hard enough so most drivers in an accident will generally brake. They tend to brake quite late because they've not drilled themselves to covering the brake pedal early. And you really do want to get the car under heavy braking momentum as quickly as possible in those emergency situations. And just as a little experiment, when you're out driving, make sure there's nothing behind you and use your left foot to brake. So your left foot has not become as accustomed to the fine tuned graduated control that you've developed in your right foot. So you will generally brake much harder using your left foot and just notice how much quicker your car will actually stop. So in an emergency situation, you need to stop as quickly as that. So interestingly with braking, it's not a linear progression in terms of the car slowing up. So as you first press the brake pedal from the higher speeds, you're peeling off speed relatively slowly and the rate at which the car slows up accelerates as that speed drops. So you really want to get that process underway as soon as possible. You can shorten the overall braking distance by getting the car under brake Taking momentum earlier rather than later. You may actually observe the road ahead to be a hazard you've suddenly come onto and it, it may be a case that by swerving to the right you can extend the amount of road that you've got to brake in whereas if you carried going in a straight line you would hit whatever it was that was the obstacle obviously as you're turning the car's weight is on those outside wheels so they're more likely to lock up so the abs is going to cut in but generally speaking you will have more distance to brake in by taking that curved line than going in a straight line so this is where part of that strategizing that we've already mentioned comes into play. So a little tip when braking for comfort for your passengers, if you just brake and keep consistent pressure on the pedal, the car is going to jolt forward as it stops. If as the car starts to slow up, you ease off the brake, you'll get a much more gradual rolling stop and you won't get that same jarring sensation. So in everyday driving, sometimes you have to brake maybe a bit harder than you wanted to. But getting that braking momentum building up and then easing off will go a long way to reassuring your passengers that you're in full control of the car and keep the overall journey comfortable for them. So think now about your stopping distances. So most people learn that the stopping distance at a set speed is a set distance. But if you ask the person to drop a cone ahead at that distance, they probably can't do it. They've just learned an academic number. Do you actually have a clear idea on how many feet or meters your car will take to stop at any set speed? Bear in mind, if two cars are coming towards each other, you need to double the stopping distance. They're both traveling at speed. So if they both start braking at the same point, their stopping distance is effectively going to be beyond each other. So they're going to crash. So when you're on those narrow country lanes, which we get a lot of in the UK, and there really is only room for one car, you need to be traveling slow enough to allow that car coming towards you to stop in time so you can avoid that collision. See, a good driver is keeping out of the way of other motorists. Another skill that's important to learn is heel and toe braking. Now, in a lot of modern cars, it's quite hard to brake 
and use the accelerator. So you may have to switch around and use your toe and your heel. But the idea really is that you're braking, the clutch will often be down, you can just blip the throttle rev match, or you can get the engine going, get the RPMs up. So if you've got a turbo engine, for example, you want the turbo to start spooling up before you get back on the power. That can shave important seconds off your lap times. It's probably not a skill you need to learn for driving around in everyday road situations, but it's certainly a useful skill to use. You want to use all of your limbs and keep things as smooth as possible when you're driving. So I hope that's been useful to you. Please boot that like button. We've got more on driving coming soon. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned to all the tips that we've got coming out. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in this next video.